Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Leviathan Up Against Ehug in the Battle of America Season Number 2. I'm for Revolution 5, joined by Rupture for Game Number 2, where Ehug leads 1 to nothing. Jenkins' Pudge did not work out. It honestly was embarrassing for myself saying, oh, Jenkins' Pudge is amazing. Don't worry, guys, you'll see. And then, pfft, pretty much flopped. Well, but you gotta hand it to Ehug being able to shut it down. Well, to be honest, that's why I never root for a, for a Pudge. Just yeah. Like just because, I mean, either it goes gloriously or it just fa uh, falls flat on his face. Yeah. There is no middle ground with this guy. I mean, anyway, that's pretty much how it works, and that's the first game I think we've ever really seen Jenkins falling flat on his face. <laughs> Anyways, mm -hmm. they're not going to ban it on Ehug because, I mean, they know how to play against it. And, uh, however, I will say that doesn't completely rule it out for Leviathan. I would be a little surprised if we saw it again, but honestly, it can still work. And Jenkins plays it well when it works out. Yeah. I just, I, Five seconds <laughs> I'm the worried if they ward it again. I mean, if they ward it again, I think Jenkins just like calls GG right then and there. Yeah. Let's see. What I recollect a lot about this, uh, about the previous match, it was just like, e hook played it really to their strength of, of the of their lineup, even though there are there were some wonky items like sanking Yasha into a viper and such, I feel they they still knew that they had the the late game pre pretty much on lockdown. Yeah. So they did it. They took their time. They really didn't rush it. They just did it, you know, properly and just uh, you know pretty much exploited the Leviathan's weakness on their draft. Now, um, also, by the way, uh. I'm just gonna segue a little bit out of this, but uh, shout out to our sponsors because we kind of forgot about that on the oh yeah on the previous game. So uh, shout out to Hitbox, Dota Two Bus Yellow, uh, Esports Bets where you earn real money, as well as um, Dota Two Lounge for covering this game tonight for one thing. Exactly, Dota Two Lounge of course, and uh, missing one uh, Dota uh, Two Daily. Dota Two Daily, yep. As well yeah. as uh, E Battle and. Vinotech for sponsoring the ticket as well, and of course Latin American casters who are getting us together. Even though it's been We're more English, up, but yeah, yeah. For they hooked me up. Part of Latin American caster, so I'm not officially yes. You're, you're you're just someone who just joined for the ride. Yep. Pretty much, but hey, you know we're happy more to have so. you. I'm definitely not Latin American though from North Carolina, so yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe your grand, that grandfather, the grandfather, or your grandfather, or the grandfather, or the grandfather, might have lied about their children. Just I mean, it's it's possible, but I doubt it. All right, all right. Anyway, let's go back to the matter at hand, and uh, so we're Leviathan, gonna start up. They pick up oh. the PA. Um, yep. It's a hero that's good against Void in general, and I think that's honestly why they picked it up. Uh, not to mention, it's kind of flavor of the month right now, not only in competitive play, but in pubs due to the new Arcana and, ooh, shiny new item. Which, some of you guys may receive after your bets tonight, it looks like. Yeah. I actually, hmm. And I, I like these three heroes in, in just in tandem, working in tandem. I mean, Vengeful Spirit setting up... Uh, a stun on top of a wave of terror, you know, you get the, the quick uh, DPS burst from the Phantom Assassin, and the Skyred Mage just to finish off and just um, uh, keep the target on lockdown with the silence and the conclusive shot. So, they're pretty ni uh, like nimble, but at the same time, really powerful heroes, and at least on damage output wise. Yeah. Uh, on the side of E Hog, uh, we have. A similar situation, but the Fatal's Void is a little bit more of a team fighting oriented hero, just with a Chronosphere. But it's a really sturdy hero, uh, good uh, good armor, great offlaner too at the moment. Yeah, great offlaner has really good passives to work with that. So I mean, so far the Leviathan are looking into having a little bit more of a how can I say this? A little bit more of power in their punch, in the in at least on this particular draft compared to the last game they're kind of go they're gonna try to go more in your face you could say um but still keeping their options open 
you know, they just picked a mid laner and, you know, two supports, so... For all I know, I mean, the hard, the, the carry role could be anything, right? Because both, uh, both of these supports actually work pretty well with most carries in the current meta. So... <clears throat> yep, they'll pick it again! Alright! Hold on to your rares, boys. I honestly, though... Having a strong lockdown with a PA is a really big deal. Not only do they have that, they have the Vengeful Spirit, they have the Swap. They've got a much better lineup. I don't agree with picking it into Puck, though. Mm. Phase Shift is too good against Hook. I mean, let's just be real here. See Hook? Phase Shift Hook, pretty much. Yeah. Here, the deal is the Skyrim Mage is actually a really good pick versus the Puck. So, it's kind of a little bit on, uh, as well on the Hook side that they, like... They really didn't want to pick this particular hero in this lineup, but at the same time, they they kind of have they kind of have to. Yeah. So I mean, even though the Pudge really okay, two fan favorite heroes, man, Enigma and the Pudge. Yeah, I'm I'm. You're long ready, man. You're long. <sighs> Give me a moment here. Oh. Gonna get ready for the black hole. Black hole! Sorry. Yeah. I we should learn to harmonize with it, you know? <laughs> no, I, I was I was actually just playing with the mic and just pulling it out like this. Just oh, okay. Yeah, I that, was inten that was totally intentional. If I wanted to harmonize, I will... No, actually, I'm going to save that when it happens. But be on the watch there. Um, Enigma Greedy Support... That will work a lot with the Faceless Void. Just the Midnight Pulse on top of a Chrono Street is just amazing. They banned uh, the, the Viper too. I think that's a very smart ban here. But e -Hug still <laughs> needs a carry, and they need a blue carry too, because color coordination, man. I mean, look at Pudge. He sticks out among the whole draft screen like a sore thumb. A Morphling. They need a Morphling. That's, yeah, Morphling. Uh, yeah, I think that will be the bluest carry that you can pick. And I actually don't think it would be that bad here. Elder Titan is banned out by E-Hug, so... Yeah, also it will, it will... Hypothetically, if he farms fast enough, he can actually just E-Blade the Phantom Assassin out of the gate, out of the freaking picture. So... Really good on that front. Uh, right, can right-click the punch uh, with rather ease. Especially if you manage to make him waste his ult or hook. You pretty much can... Deal with him. Also, they banned the, the Timber Saw, which, yeah, I can see that happening. I mean, he has a lot of burst damage, even for intelligence heroes. I mean, intelligence heroes, because of the, of the um, World in Dead, uh, you know, stats reduction. Yeah, which and I guess intelligence heroes doesn't doesn't get affected as much because you only lose your mana pool. But at the same time, the raw amount of pure magical damage that you can receive. From you know, from the timber so it would be something to reckon with. And also, just the the mm -hmm. amounts of control he has over a team fight, especially with the Ags upgrade, he can dish out tons of damage. He can throw those shockrams everywhere. Puck can't mm -hmm. just say, "Oh, I'll just phase shift and then blink." Um, you'll phase shift. You'll open your phase shift eyes and then see that there is still a saw blade right through your gut. Yeah. And you'll be you'll be like chop lipper, just like chop level them, just you know. Pretty yeah. much on a on a display table, two days later or maybe one, depends on how well your market price goes. But anyway, uh, outside of the butcher references, um, Conka. Oh, oh. Okay, so off lane Pudge, mid lane Conka, safe lane PA. Conka is really good against Puck. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I mean, yes, you can face shift the. Uh, Tidebringer hits if you're really on top of your game, but then again, he can just attack animation, cancel his attack, and it, yeah, you've wasted your. If anything, shift. he forces you to actually spend mana onto that. Yeah. Ten well, not onto was... phase shift rupture. No, I was thinking, I was thinking the orb for some reason, but yeah. Yeah, the orb can't uh, get you out. The X is yeah. also so good against puck. And yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, really, really. wait, 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 wait. Does it still work with Pudge if you 
Can you still do the X hook thing where you force Staff Pudge forward and then pull him back and the hook goes further? I don't think you can since the fountain hook nerf. Or fix, we could say, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. That's actually a good question. E Hugo, they do pick up the Razor. They've got a backup plan against Pudge right now. I'm already moving, right. moving right into the game. Yes, PA has the Arcana. Shredder, uh, got a pretty good looking Arcana too. 102 assassination score and a ton of crits as well as last hits with the dagger. We'll go ahead and introduce Leviathan, your underdogs in the series at the moment. Shibby will be on the Admiral Kunkka, who I believe has finally had his pipe fixed so that it doesn't look like he's got a sniper aimed at his head. We'll have Sunken on the Skywrath Mage uh, once again. A hero he performed relatively well left, but it'll be interesting to see this time around. New Sham will be on the Vengeful Spirit oh, already. And Jenkins once again on the Pudge with... Uh, E-Hug on the other side, and now Faces Void gets stunned up. They do get a nice big drain off on Nushim, and actually a lot of damage going his way. He's going to fall for first blood over to Infinity on the side of E-Hug. Damn. That was, some, that was some really quick reaction from that Razor, man. Well, also as well as Enigma, just yeah. going for the minute pulse. However, his farm is going to be delayed. Significantly because he's not having a first uh, first level idol on, but he can hang out around mid and sass some yeah. XP from Puck or yeah. rather Razor, I think. Yeah, Razor. Yeah, so if you'll go ahead and introduce E Hug. All right, for the side of E Hug, we have lost on the chilling old cold ice cone, pretty much <laughs> the ancient apparition. Uh, it's also going to be followed by SN7 with a faceless void. With a Lovecraftian uh, little headpiece there. Also, yeah. we're gonna have it's not the the mastermind here, the maestro you could say uh, with the uh, enigma. In the mid lane, we're gonna have Infinity with the Razor, and on the top lane, uh, solo off lane is gonna be MJW with the little fairy dragon puck. Hmm. Yeah, I am... Okay, in terms of draft, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I actually think Leviathan has a stronger gank draft. However, I don't believe that's the stronger draft in the current meta. I feel like a big team fight and a strong push is going to be the strongest thing you can do here. However, Jenkins will be up against a melee laner. That's actually a bit of an advantage for him, as he is actually able to lane from level 1 at the moment. He is... I think considering that they probably blocked off his uh, favorite camp over here, um, and he may not be able to do it. They have to get away in with Pudge, though, and you have to admire Leviathan for their sheer... Uh, will? Yeah, their courage, their balls, if you will. Um, just to say, hey, we lost with Pudge, you win some, you lose some, let's get back on the horse, see if we can do it again. Yeah. And this time, I, I think e prepared for it, but I don't think they're as prepared for it as they were in game number one. Meanwhile, Puck already being sent back toward mid to secure the rune. MJW actually doesn't have any cosmetics for Puck. What a shame. Yeah. Disgraceful. Disgraceful. However, I I, I actually am leaning towards the e hook side of, um, of the lineup. Yeah. Yes. The AoE control that you're gonna have is just gonna be ridiculous. Yeah, and that's and where their lineup really shines. With Black Hole, Chronosphere, Puck, Coil, Silence, Orb, AA ult to top it all off, and then a Razor who just is gonna mean you deal no damage to their already squishy heroes. They've got a really well-formed draft here, and that's the thing Leviathan are missing. However, PA is a very strong hero against many of these heroes. Yes. But at the same time, Razor is going to, I mean, with the amount of sheer control that you're going to have with this yeah. line, Razor is going to have a field day. I mean, yeah. unless it gets shut, shut down on the lane pretty hard. Which I doubt is going to happen. There is a uh, torrent coming out that will land, but it'll just delay Infinity from going after the rune the same time Shibi is. And Shibi uh, is actually going here and realizing, hey, Puck already got it. And actually, a very nice ward spot here from Leviathan. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't know you could actually place a ward there. I did remember, but usually the problem is that you kind of forget because of the tree that is in front of it, which makes this ward ten times better. Just because of the tree. 
Yeah, you're um you're not gonna get dewarded as easily here, but also you're gonna miss a lot of vision over here. As you can see, I flipped it to dire vision for you. Um, that you wouldn't normally get. We do have a bit of lag on E Hug's side. I had this at the beginning of the previous game, so. Yeah, somebody said it in chat. Uh, our punch failed first game. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> and then somebody says in pubs that Pudge gets a report, which is not at all correct. You don't report people for playing badly. Thanks for improving the community, though. <laughs> um, not really. You gotta start well, somewhere. This is the Jenkins way, right? He's like making honor to his la to you know to the Leroy, you know. Yeah. Us. I would say, well, I mean, if I fell once, might as well try it again. Unless you're gonna have chicken. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this yeah. I have freaking man. <laughs> so, you know, and he's actually doing way better on this offline than before. Already level four. Yeah, and actually, I've got the set up. sorting wrong there. Sorry about that, guys. Um, it was still <laughs> sorted to show the uh, buyback, and I'd split it by team, but. We will see Kanka going for a bounty rune right about now. There'll be an illusion rune up here for infinity instead. Dyer's yeah. middle tower is under attack. All right. I'm not going to count Leviathan out of this one. But they do have really good team fight. Let's keep in mind. If mm -hmm. Shibby stays back outside of the chrono, he's actually able to land a pretty big boat. Things are going to get ugly. Really yeah. fast for E-Hug. Especially with... A tanky Pudge with the rum on him is pretty intense. PA with rum as well is very, very strong. It's really, it's, it's not impossible to take down, to be honest. It also blocks. Hmm? Apparently, um... Oh, they're actually going to jump the on Jenkins. Blocks, and, uh, well, they were, anyway. Of course, as oh. soon as I'm looking, they can't get the kill because they've got to make me look bad, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's how they do. I've been working to improve the uh, camera control, though. Hopefully, you guys are seeing a slight improvement. I know it's still not perfect. I never said it was. Just better. It's always been my weakness. But, hey. Um, the only weakness. Camera control. No. Like one of those um, <laughs> comic uh, yeah. villains, you know? That they are invulnerable to anything, and they're just like, oh no, my only weakness. And, you know. Yeah. They end up, like, fitting. I don't know. I'm just putting oh, mine out in the open, though. Yeah. Just keep it. <laughs> just be. Huh? Oh my god. I'm not even gonna. Well, I, okay. I had a weird. Okay. Thought, cool. you know, coming through my mind, but I was like, yeah, but now it's like a really bad taste joke, so. Yeah, just keep it safe. Actually, Infinity Mid -lane. got to the face. Yeah, he took a boat right there. Sorry I was a little late on that one. I was trying to figure out what Rupture was talking about. Oh, the the illusion deny of the rune there. It's just like, hey, you make it that bad. Pudge, on the bot lane, you can trash him all you want, but he just picked up a kill on AA. And we were talking about how Pudge, he does need to snowball to get those flesh, uh, flesh heap stacks up. Mm -hmm. uh, not flesh deep hacks, of course. Um, and to get his mobility items up, he's gonna have his bottle and tranquil boots, and uh, those are Shibby's phases as well. They'll take down the faceless void with a rotation in here from two supports, and Jenkins, he's back. Yeah. GG E hug fan straights take care of my rears. I don't think so. Not yet, at least. Not yet, yeah. We, it's we'll have to we'll have to wait till like the 15 minute mark or a 20 minute mark. To see so how they're doing at that point, but... These punches gonna actually do. And of course it is Dota, oh, anything can happen, but... I mean, he's... Okay, he's already level 7, 7 minutes in. It took him 11 minutes to get this far last time. Just because of one board, basically. I yeah. feel like. And now... He's doing it. He throws the hook, he lands it on the faceless void! They'll get the silence off, I don't even know! How do you even... What? Whoa. That was threading the needle right there. That, yeah, that was a really... Well, I guess the angle helped him a little bit, but still... Yeah, still, though. They've got wards all over this jungle. And that, and that's what they need to do, uh, by the way. Pudge, now that you have level 7, like 7 minutes in... Oh, another one! A stun from Nushim. And yeah. Onage now for Leviathan, who... 
Leviathan's so noob, says chat. Leviathan's so bad. Please, please no pudge. Please never again. Ownage. Yep. Well, bad. But, I mean, he needs to keep it up. He, he has um, to keep it up, yeah. Yeah, the, the advantage is, like, it is a pudge. So, keeping it up with a pudge is just simply getting more mana. And, and getting more up. kills. Being yeah. able to get I mean, consistent kills with pudge gives you more HP. Need. I mean, that's 20 HP per kill, basically. Oh, this one. Never mind, 40 HP per kill in the late game. Yeah. Uh, and this is why I'm saying he's a snowball hero. He misses one there, but hey, whatever. He throws another. It's going to miss as well, but... I mean, he's already managed to secure two kills and two assists here for the team. He's part of four of the team's five kills in the early game, and that's really huge. I'm actually, though, surprised that Vinge isn't going mana boots. Snaw's going to move yeah. in, though. He's level six as well, and he's got a black hole. We're going to see us in seven. Get it uh, slowed down here. Notice he noticed last night nearby. There is an X and a torrent. And, and an easy rot. I mean, Pudge is here. He gets cold feeded up, but I don't think he even minds. Yeah. Kunkka lands the boat to secure the kill, and they're getting the farm on the big heroes here. Kunkka and Pudge, very farm dependent. Very important to snowball early and get those big items up early on. And Jenkins, I'm assuming we'll see him go straight into Blink, would you say? Mm, yeah, or a four staff. Either of those. He does really. need mana pool, yeah. Yeah. And the four staff would definitely help. Nice torn off. It'll clean up some creeps, though. No heroes caught. Shibby, though, he manages to get a pretty big hit off there. Not quite killing off the Adolans, though, which is unfortunate. Skyroth comes in, manages to slow the razor. Meanwhile, up top, MJW, he's going to come in here. He throws the orb, but oh, uh, doesn't Jenkins. connect on damage. Jenkins is a little out of position here. He might oh. just be baiting, though. They don't throw out anything on him. At all. And he'll move into the mid lane for now. Shibby, looking to rotate around. He's got 1,200 in the bank. I'm curious as to what he's going to go for. I would expect a drum at the moment. Uh, on the PA? On the uh, Kunkka, actually. Yeah. Oh, the Kunkka. PA's going Vlads already. And yeah, drum. Drum. I feel like to man fight a void effectively, you need a Vlads. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how this works exactly, but if he backtracks it, do you still lifesteal? I don't think so. Okay. I'm not sure about voids because, you know, it's not evasion, so. Yeah. Honestly, I think that Jenkins should be going for a soul ring just to keep his sustain up. Just to keep the, the hooks coming. <laughs> Which is pretty much all you, all you really need as a punch right now. Uh, on the side of, uh, let's see, Sunken, uh, he has his mana boot, so he's pretty good. He's doing just fine here. Yeah, yeah. Shimmy might be going for maybe even a Shadow Blade, I would, I would say. It's not the most common item anymore, but... It's, it works. He's probably going Blink, though. The, uh, Sing build. If I'm oh, not yeah. mistaken, yeah. yeah. Something it's I often like, forget I about on Kunkka, because you rarely see it, but with the X and the yeah, Blink, exactly. I mean, you can do a lot. Exactly. The reason why I was saying Shadow Blade is just because I totally forgot that there was a sync thing deal with a yeah with a with a blink and such, and I uh, it has been a while. Since blink I travels uh, for uh, rapiers too. Four man smoke. Four man smoke. Looking for the enigma. Or looking the for anything. I mean, they're gonna actually maybe find. Lost in the jungle. They do take down the mid tower, but meanwhile, here it comes. They're gonna go after Snot. He's silenced up. He's gonna get hit with the boat, or he's just gonna get demolished by the Pudge beforehand. There's an AA ulti oh, coming out. Chrono is dropped from SN7. They also have that Skyrath Mage ult going down, but it doesn't get much damage off. Coil from Puck. There's a hook, though, and it hits a creep. Well, wow. yep, that's a little awkward engagement. Kunkka, though, with the blink up, but keep in mind, two for one trade. Leviathan already ahead. Eog actually profits quite a bit out of this. Yeah, I mean it was a it was a really okay trade, all things considered. Um, they did lose the middle tower though, in order to pull that off. So you could say Eog managed to get a little bit more of a gold lead out of this. Yeah. But uh, I mean they are still snowballing, and that's pretty much the most important part about at least the Pudge side of the draft. Yeah. Also, the 
Phantom Assassin is farming pretty much all by himself, and she getting is pretty good uh, farm, with yeah. the 82-14 on the creep score, so... Already working on BKB. And BKB is a necessary item here. Yes, Chronosphere, Razor ult, Enigma ult, they all go through. It's Puck. It's really mm -hmm. pretty much just Puck on the side of E-Hug that forces out the BKB buy, as well as the massive amounts of damage coming out from Enigma in his black hole. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, their oh, courier nice. actually falls. Where was that? Shibby? Yeah, on bottom lane. Oh, these wards are definitely paying off now. Yeah. Yeah, he actually went for oh, it. But the black hole up on top lane, it grabs two. Shredder Dota, he's under fire, and he'll get taken down. A ulti comes out, but it's a little too late, but not even really necessary there. They take down two. And uh, Enigma popping a big cooldown there. A retaliation, though. If they're able to land the hook... SN7 is pretty much dead, and they have a ward there, but he noticed them, I think. That's why he's hiding behind tower, but see, here's the problem with the threat of a Pudge. If you know that Pudge is ahead of you, you know he's been landing hooks, mm -hmm. where can you farm that's safe? He could oh. be anywhere, if you don't have good wards up, and right now SN7, he's just trying to get his farm where he can, and he does have a chrono now. I think he's going to try to go for it, but he's waiting for the TPN from Puck. Ice Blast moving in. Nushim is going to go down here. But there's a boat from Konka. Oh, wow. They're going to dodge it. Nicely done. Nushim actually manages to make it out. That defensive hook, man. It was beautiful. Oh, Jenkins barely missing it on the faces forward there. Who is moving toward mid lane. But in the meantime, Ehug managing to push. They get the top tower. Objectives are coming up for them. However, it is even on Golden XP Experience at this point. Yeah. Take a look at Razor, net worth. Though. Razor, yeah, he's he's very hard, far ahead of the pack. PA may have perfect glasses, but hasn't been a part of any fights, if I'm not mistaken, except for the one that resulted in her death. All right. Um, man, I, I really, I really hate to cast when I have a cold, man. It's just like it's really, it's really killing my tempo, man. It's really, it really does. Yeah, of course, so if you'd like I, to buy I'm Rupture some cold medicine, you can donate below. There is a donate link, and all donations oh. get split among the casters. Meanwhile, on the mid lane, though, MJW coming in with the orb. He'll throw down a coil to Jenkins, and Jenkins going to TP out. Will he get it? He manages to make it away. No bash for you, SN7. He has a level 4 bash. And bad. there we go. There's the stun. It comes through. A cleave from Shredder. Actually, not a cleave from Shredder, a cleave from Conk. They do manage to take down the Venge, though, and the Skyrath. This did not work out the way Leviathan thought it would. The Regoose. Duncan, not looking so good. What are you doing there, man? I'm confused. He just ran next to the Razor just to get killed. Guys, which team am that I was, on again? That was a little weird, man. I was like, well, you could go for the other side of the trees, just saying. We're on the one with the red guys, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, they're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm totally with a razor. No, wait, that's wrong team. Oh god, he's wrong team. <laughs> I don't think that was the case, but yeah. yeah. I don't know, that was a really weird, weird moment from Sunken. Especially because he already dumped his ultimate, so it was like, uh, no reason. Also, by the way, Snaf farming the enemy jungle. He might actually could get jumped on if uh, the if guy Shredder from, notices. Uh, I think he's him. actually going to see him. He'll throw a dagger, but he's actually not going to engage there. I'm a little surprised from Shredder. Black Hole's up Maybe in seven seconds. Maybe he's expecting to be in a reinforcement because he doesn't see anyone else on the on the map until now. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, yeah, probably this is not just you know setting up for something bigger. But now Jenkins, nope. Throw a hook, land a hook, chop him up. Yeah, up we go. Jenkins now dominating as well. Um. Void is sitting on 1500 and a Mask of Madness. Okay for him, but not amazing. Jenkins is 4 0 and 3, though. All but one kill have basically been at least part of Jenkins doing it. And this is what we're talking about with Jenkins Pudge. It's it's not a throwaway pick. It's it's real. And, oh, SN7. He manages to get the time walk off. A boat will clean up a creep, but that's about it. And Lust coming in. MJW, they'll find Shibby. They'll manage to hit him with a lot of damage as well as the Ice Blast. Nice hook from the Pudge, though. Bringing Shibby 
back to dry land, it looks like, until the Chrono comes through. The swap, though, are they going to take him down? They can't find him. Puck comes in with a blink and a silence to bring him down, finally. SN7 getting stunned by Nushim. They try to hook. They miss it, though. Beautiful plays from MJW there. And he's kind of been the weak link on E-Hug from time to time, but today he has really been on his game and very impressive. Pudge, though, he's not afraid, and Nushim, he's dropping low. Oh, Jingus wow. throws the hook at the orb, thinking MJW was going to jump to it, but smarter than the average puck this one is. I don't know. I think he was trying to... <clears throat> he was actually thinking about it. But uh, I think Jenkins jumped the gun a little bit. Yeah. And uh, if he waited, like, maybe one second or half a second, he probably could have gotten... Got, uh, could have gone the, the hook there. Maybe. At the same time, it would. It was more like a 50-50 chance. Yeah. It looks like either BKB or Maelstrom for Void. I, I'd rather see BKB. I know that it's not going to do that much for you at the moment, but it'll do a lot for Skywrath and Kanka. Vengeful Spirit's Sun. It'll stop the damage from Pudge's ult, but not from his hook. And actually, ulti coming out from AA. It's That's gonna catch four. One. That's a really big one, but There's Leviathan aren't hurt very much. And they're actually gonna be able to do this. I do like the fact, though, that they're not using Jenkins' ult to take down the Roche, because he instantly goes, ah, ha, ha, fresh meat, and the whole team knows. And yeah. the only thing is, I mean, after the AA ult came in there, why not use it anyway, you know? Hmm. Maybe he wanted to have it ready for any kind of uh, kind of rotation coming from uh, Ehug. Like maybe they actually wanted to contest it. So of course, if you're gonna blow up your ultimate on a on a Roche, well, that's thirty seconds that you're not able to lock down um, a person, pretty much. And Jenkins has no shame. He literally like hooks a creep, and he's like, "I meant to do that," and he really did mean to do that. There were no heroes anywhere nearby. Yeah. He's just like, I gotta get my farm, man. And he gets his blink up. There's a Maelstrom up on the face. It's void. Not much mana. BKB up on PA, though. And at the moment, I feel like Leviathan can take a team fight and start to push off of it. Mm -hmm. But if the team fight goes badly, things could really fall apart. However, there's a minute cooldown on the black hole. There's five seconds cooldown on the ulti from AA. There's at least enough mana for Void's ult. But without the black hole, their team fight does considerably <coughs> weaken. You know, they'll jump in on Shredder, it looks like. Meanwhile, though, Jenkins and company are warding up and just ready to pounce. They've de-warded the enemy team. It's going to be an AAO out here. It won't hit anything. Oh, my goodness. A little bit too forward. If he lands it, like, uh, where the oh, range is, they'll probably get 100%. I mean, they're not able to back away from that unless they wanted to really... You know, um, reduce any any incoming uh, attack. Oh, Enigma manages to take a top tower, but in the mid lane meantime, crit. Puck gets crit down. How much is she critting for? Did you see? Four seventy one. So not too big yet, but still, this is without any real damage item. Mm -hmm. I mean, you exactly. can kind of say Vlad's is a bit of a damage item, but it, it's not it's a, a ton. Scaly damage item. That's the thing with the Vlad's. I mean, Vlad's is a, <laughs> it's an amazing item, but it's an item that you kind of wanna have like uh after your first damage item pretty much and they're actually gonna go for infinity and they'll take him down too very quickly snaz here he gets a black hole on two but a swap from nushim will end it very quickly there's the chronosphere but shredder not caught in it he needs a crit he'll find it on to sna and lust oh, getting critted as well meanwhile sn7 though He'll try to go down. Unfortunately, though, he got hooked at the last second there. And Shibby coming in. SN7 can't get away here. That's a triple kill for Shredder. His 10-second BKB charge doing tons of work here. This is what Leviathan wanted to do game one. They just got countered. The only problem is now they've got to do it twice in a row, basically. Honestly, I think that Leviathan, now they want to do it because they now have a carry to, that can actually take advantage of this. Yeah. And make things work. What did they Razor have last game, the Razor? Kind of yeah. Game. Razor really needs to be ahead from the start, as we've said multiple times. Not in this match, but in previous matches. Holy Basher. What the for Basher? <laughs> yes, what seriously. Um, well, dude. That timing. That timing, man. 22 minutes. And here is when uh, Vlad starts to kick in. Yeah, so really. Have, oh, damage items. That 15% is, is exponentially grow 
uh, based on pretty much the amount of extra damage you can sink into this. Meanwhile, so, we've got 300 more gold for Kanka, or less now, on a Battle Fury. Okay, he's gonna go for Battle Fury as well. I, I personally think the item's just fine for Kanka. Yeah, the extra farm comes pretty handy. It's a decent okay. damage item, the regen's good, and the cleave, I mean, it's not like, uh, yes, we're gonna farm up for 40 minutes, but stacking Battle Furies can work. It's, it's okay. It's not the worst thing. Especially there if you're gonna go crit, old, too. There was an old build that, uh, that was, uh, again, from... I remember from some Han guys, but it was, like, really popular back in the day. Yeah. Uh, it was the... Um, Pretty much someone that was pretty much like a, the port of the Konka, and it was just like um, two Battle Furies, a crit, and a Shadow Blade. Yeah. And then Rapier. And just. And then Rapier! Yeah. And just one shot people all the time, every time. Sometimes people used to sacrifice one Battle Fury for a, for a Vladimir just because of the extra damage, you know, increase. Because, I mean, a Raker Cross of Vladimir does a, gives a lot of damage extra. So, I mean... I mean, that's, that's what, 45 extra damage right on the top? Yeah. And, actually, I now I remember, the difference that it, it really had before... Uh, well, no, it's, it's actually the same as Conquer, so what the hell am I talking about? Uh, it was pretty much based on, like, okay, go behind the enemy team and just throw a, throw a, a quick uh, hit and just wipe the enemy team. Because it was through damage, due to the splash nature. Oh, quick X, then nothing better come out of it. They're just using it to push. Oh. It's the mm -hmm. Blink Kanka. He sets up an X on himself, blinks forward, forms some creeps. If anything bad happens, he presses E and runs. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, though, Ancient Rapparition. <coughs> Starting the split push. He doesn't have a Midas, though, so he's not going to be getting that Ags anytime soon, in my opinion. There's a Blink forward from Shibby. And they'll back off, but I mean, this tower's already dead. They'll get a deny, but that's map control, and SN7 is gonna get jumped on here. The Bash is coming out from PA, as well as the Mystic Flare. There was a black hole ready, but I don't think they wanted to. A coil came out from Puck and hit nothing. Oh no. Uh, uh oh, that, that's bad. Blue the man. swap? Even a swap the blink from Pudge, and there's the dismember. Look, Jenkins can't hit hooks. Who needs to hit hooks when you got a blink? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you gotta hit hooks to get your blink most of the time, but hey. Now that you have it. Oh, AA. AA is done for. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Lust, he can stun up Jenkins all he wants. He can throw off the uh, ult, but the hooks already come out. The damage has been done. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, Jenkins, sure, he's a core, quote unquote, but he's the offlaner. He's the weak core in the situation. He's just the initiator. He's not meant to deal out tons of right click damage. He doesn't even need to. Probably he wouldn't. I mean, it would be a really weird thing to pull out, by the way. You know, try to. If you get enough dish out. Um, sacks of flesh heap, then you can, but. Mm. Even at that point, you're still just. Your attack speed is. Not that low, great. Yeah, your attack speed's awful. Your, your sustain is. Yeah. Yep. Nah, nah, nah. Rather just just go full tank mode, you know, just try to rush a heart and maybe even a Crimson Guard wouldn't be such a bad idea, but he's probably gonna go with the pipe route. Yeah. Just to stack more magical resist and also because Well, it's just what Pudge does. I mean the region is pretty handy. Oh nice hook! Gee, man. He gets he the puck. MGW. The phase shift comes out a little late, but he does manage to throw off the uh or he won't die to the urn charge, and Jenkins is going to be forced to go away. It's not. No, it won't kill him off. The urn damage is so much lower than its healing, and it's a good thing too. If urn did 400 damage, it would be utterly ridiculous. Lust also. Um, he uh, films Ix Mike's mustache, by the way. Oh really? Yeah. With his courier, but speaking of the devil, Lust is going to get juked or hooked back. I believe at this point in the last game, Pudge had something like six stacks of flesh heap, and had barely gotten a point in it. Now he's got 12, and he's at level 14. Yeah. Damn. I feel like... <laughs> oh, dude. I'm not, it's, it's funny. Awesome. I look over at the chat, and I don't see the, like, Leviathan. Oh, my God. Pudge is such a bad pick ever. Never pick Pudge again. You are so bad. I, I'm not seeing any of it. 
Yeah, but at the same time, you were talking a little bit biased about it, so... I was, yeah. I'll be I honest. Cut him some slack, man. And I apologize for the biased cast in Game 1. I'm trying to make it a little less biased here. It's not going great, but... It, it, uh, I apologize. Because the, it's actually working. The blink right. from Shibby here. The bait with the X, and then just like, Oh, never mind, I'm gone. See ya. Hey, Yay, uh, Abyssal, What's yeah. Up? PA and the Kungar are dominating, and Affinity, he, he ain't looking so hot this time around. Mm -mm. It's, man, it's, I have the question sometimes, the pick, why sometimes people pick Razor? I mean, I think it was a good pick here. It's a really good counter to PA, because you drain her damage, and pretty much she's done for. And also, the drain goes through BKB, so it's amazing, you know? But, uh, just... Uh, I don't know. Some I I tend to see lately that most racers just under deliver, you know. They're just underwhelming. Yeah. And they have to be ahead to be able to get ahead. They don't farm well. Like just sit back and farm the jungle, Spectre. No, you don't. You ever say that to a razor? First of all, razor is Spectre. Second of all, razor is Spectre and can't do that. He wants to go get kills. He wants to drain the life and the damage out of people very quickly with Static Link. And third of all, Razor is an inspector. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course! I am serious, and don't call me Spectre. <laughs> it's like, seriously, man. It's like... Yep, he just noticed it. It's a really great timing. I mean, it's just yeah. seven minutes to form a re uh, relic. He's just doing dandy right now. Jenkins going for the back stuff here. He might find us on seven. Yeah. Maybe. Shibby? Nope. He's gonna move forward here. Looking for it. Ah, uh, the Crypto spotted him. Yes, X marks the spot. Yeah, SN7 is not gonna have any of that. He's not gonna have any problem, though. Yeah, it's not right away in the middle. I meantime. mean, I'm sorry, sorry about Shibby, my bad. Though. Wow. Split sorry, guys, this coffee. is the fifth consecutive hour of casting for me. <laughs> Forgive me if I make some mistakes. It's been a long night. I also don't get paid for this, there's a donate link below if you're interested. Just gonna mention it. Anyways. Shameless plug! Yep. Sorry, had to be done. No, no problem, man. And Shredder, uh, meanwhile, going after the Roche. Well, and he'll yeah, take it down. Again, look at the nah, man. They're pushing in here. They can't get there in time, I don't think. PA has a TP if they need it, and Jenkins is already back. And this time, they are afraid of Jenkins. As they well should be at this point in the game. I'm just getting Bracer and a TP, I guess. Oh, here comes a boat, though. Not even necessary. The boat is just there just in case at this point. And Shredder, you know, doing honor to his name, man. Yeah. It's just a splicing people, splicing fools in twine, man. Just like if it was, again, like, you know, grade A meat. Just a 10 out of 10 over there. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. You slice it. You cook it, you just uh, some salt and pepper, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, man. Prime Void Walker, I mean, Radiant Prime Fadeless Void Meat, man. You, you just slice it, you dice it, you do it, <laughs> and you even crit him, man, if you want to. <laughs> anyway, yeah. they're gonna actually take a really fast tier 2, by the way, and Jenkinsma himself is holding pretty much a 3-man push. On the side, on the top lane. And it's not even that he has to do much. He just is there with the threat of, I might hook you right into my tower, then dismember you right under it. And what are you really going to do with about it? Are two other heroes going to dive the tower to stop me? I'm just a pudge. Yeah, it would be a, a horrible trade. Oh, is wait, is he going to find it? He doesn't nah, see him. He doesn't probably. see him. Mm. His, are his spider senses tingling enough at this point? He yeah, knows something's up. These these creep camps are empty, Jenkins. Come on, bro. Yeah. But I think he noticed he got he arrived a little bit too late. Yeah. And it is toward the end of the minute, so they could have been cleared up to a minute ago, theoretically. All right. Let me check here. Uh, in the meantime, let's see, SN7, uh, still sitting on 700, he does have his VKB finished up. I think it was been up for a while. Um, it's not going for a Hex, by the way. And last is, well, 
pretty poor, to be honest. I'm uh, JW, finish up his use. Yeah. And uh, Sunken with a use himself, actually, which is a really good timing for us for this Kyra. And again, just Jenkins is gonna lean, o lean forward and just uh, pull his way around. And honestly, I don't see us not doing any a damn thing about it. They're gonna go, go and make a trade out of that. Or hope to make a trade out of that. On the tier 2 of the bottom side for that tier 2 on the top side. And they won't be able to trade. I mean, Leviathan has serious amounts of physical oh, damage. Oh, you're gonna... Oh, wow. He's so ripped. 10 out of 10. Uh, 10 out of 10 on the Pudge. I don't know what was up with Jenkins last game. Uh, was he possessed? Was he just off? They're gonna force a buyback up from Snaw. There's an AA ulti coming in, though. It's gonna fly. Here comes the black hole. Where is it? Where's the black hole? Black hole is in base, man. There it is. Shredder, he managed to get it off, but Shibby, he he just put the axe on him and then called him back really quick to interrupt the channeling. And Black Hole's down just like that. Shredder managing to clean him up. They do take down the Skyrath Mage. They lose a uh, tower, though. Not a Rax. There's the buyback from Pudge. As Faces Voids ends his streak. It's a base race, boys and girls. And Leviathan are currently coming out on top. And there's a long-range dismember out on Infinity. He's going to get hit up and taken down. He'll be on the bench for 62 seconds. They do repel the push, but this is a range barracks with 68 HP. I wonder... Uh, if the wind blows too hard, that range barracks will fall over. <laughs> yes. This actually is pretty much close to that. I... I kind of question just something, a little bit of a segue here, but... When you dismember a racer, what actually you do dismember? Like, is there anything to... You know, rip. Like, what? What? How do you? I don't know. It's like a dismembering a ghost, I guess. Which is pretty weird. But again, my immersion needs to become priority or something. Yeah. Say I'm right. Anyway, Jenkins. Nice blinks away from the pudge. Again, um, nah. And guys, I, I know we're focusing on the pudge too much. This game, he really is the focus of the game, and he's making it work. Skyrath manages to. Get taken down or take down or good lust. Or bad, actually. No, yeah. oh, actually, the PA is also a big focal point here. Look at look at a uh, look at Shredder. Just how how much he has farmed in the past ten minutes, man. He's already sitting on another three thousand gold. He already has an abyssal blade for crying out loud. And here's the other problem that I didn't realize: Enigma doesn't even have a blink. I was expecting Blink back Black Hole to follow up an AA. Ult. I was never gonna get that because he doesn't have a blink. 0-7 on Sna, and this is the guy we've been touting as MVP that could be dropping out of the tourney right now. Ehung, they looked weak their first week. They looked really strong their next week, and now they're kind of in between. Well, it does show, I mean, as the... <coughs> as the... Um, how can you say okay. the cream rises to this the is big. Now. Nice face shift by the puck. They lay down a um, midnight pulse from the Enigma to counter push real quick. But I mean, it, it could say you, we could say, man, it is because it is a tournament. So the better teams, when they, I mean, eventually, the later you go into a tournament, the deeper you run, the better teams you're gonna face. And I feel like this is what really happens with uh, uh, Ehog right now. I mean, they're facing teams that are more into their own league, and they're not looking as good as they used to. However, they did look Jenkins pretty good. He's on looking that. for it. Yeah, they looked really good that last game, but they're not looking so strong this game. And I think it's more Leviathan are in control of this matchup, and they're playing badly. E hug look good when they're playing good. E hug look bad. I mean, it's it's the tables have turned basically, and I really think we might see a game three. It's still possible. E hug can win this still. I mean, it's not out of the question. Pudge can fall off if he doesn't snowball hard enough, and he's snowballed relatively hard, but I still wouldn't say quite hard enough. Mm -hmm. They do I have the safety like net of Shivy's Kanka though, which has been quite a surprise and a very pleasant one at that. Yeah, I feel like the mostly the, I think the most important thing that I feel like Leviathan did different is that they actually have a carry that they can rely on. Yeah, because the Storm Spirit is wasn't that particularly a like a late game like a game ending carry. You know, either yeah. use Snowball and just you know pretty much uh, 
get so many kills that it's just freaking ridiculous. Oh, or... here comes the nice blast. It'll only really connect on Shibby though. 1560 crits on creeps right there. That is a lot of damage. And PA yeah. has 3.6k in the bank. But yeah, I feel like that's pretty much a factor that changed here. I mean, instead of a storm street, get a get an actual PA and just pretty much have have that extra gold translate into something more tangible and something that might actually, you know, just be decisive. And uh, this Phantom Assassin is pretty much a textbook definition of decisive oh. because of the sheer amount of raw Ooh. damage. Like, oh. That was a bit of a misplay on Jenkins' part. They tried to blink PA in to bash and then X her back so that she gets out and then land the hook. Very yeah. hard play to pull off, though. And they know it, but hey... You gotta give them their uh, due diligence that they are at least trying here. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, another thing that happened different on the e hook side is like, oh, they got a hook. Infinity, he BKBs up. There's a coil from Puck to interrupt Pudge's uh, Ooh, dismember. A beautiful Puck. chrono. Shredder, he's getting caught out. There's a black hole only on one. Jenkins, patient, waiting. He hooks Snob. SN7's got a double kill. There's a Yules up on Pudge. And he is going to get taken down right now. Already two on the sidelines. PA retreating. They're going to give up the push for now, though. But a second Batter Fury is now coming up for Kanka. And meanwhile, up top, the wind blew, as I predicted, and they take down Rex. That's catapult, man. This was the whole reason Leviathan were spending so much time bot. I'm thinking they're not forming the map. What are they waiting for? They were just waiting. And Ehug, they had a blind spot on top lane. and Exactly. They and lost that's it. the point I wanted to bring up uh, from Ehug. It's like... They're not controlling the map as well as they used in the previous game. I know, I mean, it's because they're not winning the, the fights as hard as they used to, but at the same time, it's like they're, they're controlling the map have, has been slipping constantly with the creep waves and the pushes in general. And in return, the I think, have been more aware of this, and they have been more consistent pushing, you know, other lanes, even when they're trying to, you know, set up ganks or kills. Shredder has just picked up an MKB. And has just taken the Aegis, and Kunkka has a cheese. They just failed to push because they were a little too afraid they were going to lose Shredder. Now they can push once again. Shredder has a buyback in reliable gold with 30 to spare. And they also know that they blew up two huge cooldowns on the side of e -Hug. The Black Hole the and the Chronosphere as well. Yeah, well the Chronosphere is not on a huge cooldown now. Void has picked up an Aghanim Scepter and also a BKB, oh, which I think okay. is very important. However, he still doesn't have an MKB, so PA is still a bit elusive. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is a still a significant cooldown, if anything, but yeah. The the black hole is going to be a huge deterrent. The black or, hole, though, in that last fight, like, I just saw it go off on the stream on my uh, second monitor here, and it only hit on one. And Punch was just sitting in the corner like, yep, I see you've thrown off a black hole, that's really cute. Yeah, exactly. I, the, the, the Chrono was amazing, the Black Hole not so much. I think if they'd gotten a kill or two off of that, Leviathan would have just taken their two cores and said we can push. Yeah. But now, yeah, try they're going... Again. Midnight Pulse is going down right now. Chronos, or Black Hole's still on cooldown for a minute, about. But Shredder's got an Aegis. And they're still axing him back. Like, they're not even fully committing in here. Because they know how dangerous it is at this point. 1864 crits on the creeps. Lust will pause right now in a bit of an awkward moment. Why is it? I mean, it's just, I feel like it's a regular pause. There's nothing. Okay. Well, there is something awkward here, which is a pock uh, creep skipping. So, what? Yeah, look at puck. Okay. Or, he smoked his way up here. Yeah, he's yep. gonna take out a creep wave, but that means he's not here for the fight. Which is, I guess, a, man uh, like a manageable risk. Uh, I mean, Lost is doing a similar thing, so... PA takes on the tower, though. The, the barracks are exposed. Dyer's barracks are exposed as well, though. I'm not sure, MJW. I'm uh, really I wouldn't... Sure yeah, me. you're a puck. You're not, like, Wisp and Legion Commander. But he yeah, does do decent amounts of damage to this tower somehow. How? Well, because all the creeps are on the other side. I mean, there are no creeps on the other side. That's the reason why. The I don't. That, that Dyer has on this lane is just a catapult. Big plays coming from this puck, man. Big plays. 
So it doesn't make sense. It shouldn't happen, right? Um, here's the deal. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the range uh, barracks don't regenerate. If I'm correct, they do Re regenerate when there's backdoor, though. They definitely do. Oh, sorry. The reason why there is no backdoor is because there are no creeps on the map. You know, on the whole lane, the whole lane was empty. The only creeps that there were there, they were on the on the dire base, right? So I would assume that there is no reason for triggering the back door since they there isn't uh, any creeps outside of your base that they're on the other side, correct? Yeah. I will assume that, and uh, that's the reason why Pugma was able to actually get that damage sunk in. But Shredder is gonna still try to get SN7 into his sights. Not gonna happen. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a little bit confused about that, but I think it, that's the reason why, it, you know, it makes sense. Because there was no, you weren't technically like skipping creeps or a creep wave in order to hit that the uh, those barracks. The creeps were already dead. So, I think that the game registers that as a, like as a valid push because there you're not you're not like. You know, you're not skip creeping, uh, creep skipping. Or skip creeping. Whatever yeah. that means. Good, 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 good. You're skipping with a, like, a little rope and shit? Yeah. But yeah, you're, you weren't like cutting waves. And um, since you weren't, uh, that, I mean, there is no reason for to be that backdoor protection on. However, Leviathan wasn't up to, to this and you're just gonna pick up uh, Boots of Travel. Just, yeah. to, just to be yeah, ready. Better control of the lanes in general. Kunkka still has a cheese, by the way, and PA still has that Aegis. They should be making something happen with this, as they should actually not, because Aegis expires in about 40 seconds. But they've let PA get her boots to travel up. There's 2,300 available right now. So, yeah. I love how somebody's like, press 1 if casters give you Ebola, and then, of the five people that did, three of them were him. Like... That's, uh, oh. That good try, bro, but no. That's why I was talking, like, I was talking, and I didn't got no response from you. Yeah, I was waiting for you to say something, Rupture, but yeah, sometimes Rupture mutes his mic, yeah. Yeah, tends to happen, tends to happen. I was actually asking, when did that second battle fear came out from the Conca? Has to be like racing. it came up uh, after the big fight bottom, uh, before the previous rush. I called it out, but I mean, I I know you called out a battle fury, but I didn't. You didn't think about it because you were just like, yeah, he's got his battle fury finally. Wait a second, how? What? Oh, whatever. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Let's see, but you're just doing rather fine. Uh, uh, there is a gem on the ventral as well. That's a big and deal. Uh, mech on the Skyrath, which <laughs> the 50 minute mech type. Hey, man. if it works, it works. And uh, I think it's honestly always a good pickup. MJW is going to find Jenkins, though. This could be bad. He's got 3,200 in the bank. He might be able to deny himself, though. It's it's possible. He won't. And it will take him down. Does have buyback, though. Meanwhile, up here on the top lane, there's Shredder. He gets drained. He gets black hold up. And an AA Ice Blast takes him down as well. He'll turn on the crits and go ahead and take him out. But no Aegis available. No buyback from him either. However, Infinity getting jumped on right now. There's a hook back, but it manages to latch onto Shibby. And it's not good right now. Shibby getting bashed up. There's the disable on SN7, but he takes no damage due to the BKB. And just like that, Leviathan might have just cost himself a huge advantage. Nice hook out of the Chronosphere. MJW blinks forward. And Nushem gonna get hit there. Cheese up from Kunkka though. SN7 will take down Nushem, the gym on the deck. Nushem forced to buy back 63 seconds to go on the PA's respawn time now. And Shibby. Wow. Taken down right now. Damn, well. man. That was a really crisp execution from Ehug, man. Just dodging and kiting and. Just being way too flexible for Leviathan to handle, man. I gotta give props to particularly MJW, man.
However, okay. though, they don't manage to really push off it. They force off two buybacks, take down some cores. They still don't get a permanent advantage, you could say, you know, in terms of racks. But there is a, another permanent advantage they can get, unless, you know, Snot lays it on the ground and kills it. A sheep sticks up for Snot, and that's another hex up on this already hex full lineup. This control heavy lineup, you could say. Yeah. yeah. MKB uh, now up for Void as well. This is big. Yeah. He desperately needed that before. And PA, Even... PA is going either Maelstrom or Desso. I kind of hope it's Desso, but I'd also rather see something like a Satanic Heart. Uh, anything else with HP, pretty much. Mm. The Desso's good here. But... It's also not that good. Uh, I'd rather see, like, even Kunkka pick up the Desso. Sure, uh, yes, Cleave is not affected by armor, but it is affected by the armor of the primary unit that he hits. So if he hits someone in, with de a Desso, he's actually going to do more damage to everybody. It's kind of like giving your Cleave a Desolator effect across the whole team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, well, at the same time... Uh, it game is even at the right? moment. Oh, it's back oh, to zero. Clash. A smoke comes off. Jenkins blinking in. He can't find an opening, though. Infinity already hexed up Shibby. Shredder, BK beat up. He's going to get focused down right now. They'll go ahead and bash him down. Does he have buyback? It looks like he does not. He'll go down for the count yet again. Puck already on the sidelines. Jenkins in a bit of trouble. He'll be able to blink away. Mm, an X back from the Konka and a blink away from him as well. But Jenkins, he's in a bit of trouble. He's getting bashed up. Nice defensive heals from Skyrath. There's your torrent out from Konka as well to just protect his retreat. And... A good disengagement, they trade one for one, but they also lose that PA again, and this is a big problem for the team of the Phantom Assassin. She needs to have buyback in these fights. Yeah, but Ihug needs to step it up, man, because they're gonna get their top lane pushed in again. Yeah, so... Infinity goes back to counter push, but that means he's not available to actually push as well. So somehow, uh, Leviathan manages to keep a... Uh... Pretty much map stability. Yeah. Without actually committing, you know, buybacks and such. So, hmm. Still, I mean, it was a really good engagement, particularly that, uh, that MKB on the faceless boy caught him by surprise, and, uh, Shredder didn't know what to do, pretty much. He was relying on his evasion to save him, and when, they, when that didn't happen, he just got mauled. Just splattered all over the, the floor with the giant mace of thunder and thing is going out, man. Yeah. I don't know. I tend to use thing is a lot, but I don't know. E-Hug, they... No Roche is up from Leviathan. They sent the Adolans in. Kunkka did blink in and cleave them down. They're waiting on PA, though, I believe. She drops the male... or the Mithril Hammer in the base. But they're going. E they got going. to. Yeah, Shredder's gonna pick up the smoke and use it, I think. But they're... No, oh, okay. Ehug knows now. They know they have a smoke. And Ehug are smoked themselves at the moment. They're looking for an engagement, but since that ward just got killed, they don't know where to go for it. I mean, they know the general together. direction, but they don't have enough info. They're gonna go for the pit. Can they take this fast enough, though? It depends I mean, on Kunkka's boat. Mid versus a Pudge is kind of a tricky situation here. It's all on Shibby right now. They'll throw in the armor reduction. There's, There's a, a torrent. Hook. There's the hook out on Snaw. Snaw is out of the fight. No buyback available. Shredder there comes in. Fit. He's going on SN7, but all of a sudden the Chrono comes out. They'll turn around on him. He'll be down with no buyback yet again. Sunken, he's using up. Meanwhile, in the pit, oh, Jenkins going down quick. Up. They're still all alive except for Snaw from Ehug. There's a coil out on Sunken. Roshan falls to... SO7, just man fighting. Doing the man fight. Oh god, oh, this is the, the disaster. They it took it out. They took out Roche. Leviathan did, somehow. I don't know who got it. But the Razor did snatch the Aegis. And Sheez was used there somewhere as well. Oh, There's 40... Uh -huh. 4,800 gold up on Razor, and nobody here to defend. Quoting Sing. The middle tower, though. The strikes. Oh, my God. Creeps are pushing in. I'm not sure it's enough at the moment, though. Uh, I think it is. They're all dead. No, 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 no. Creeps are pushing into E-Hug's base as well, though. Oh, yeah, well, the top lane push. And actually this actually might just even up the game. Like, it looks disastrous, but there's still hope for Leviathan. 
And I'm not saying I really want to stay up another hour and cast another game, but, uh, you know, whatever. At this point. I mean, they only have a buyback on the on the conca. That's a problem. I mean, I I don't I don't see anything stopping uh, Infinity just manhandling uh, the rest of the base. Wait, there is a tier two though. So okay. Yeah. Like it, that that is a deterrent. And Infinity is trying to go through back door here. This is where yeah. I'm worrying. Okay. Have you seen Conca's gold lately? He's fifty eight hundred gold. Yeah. I was actually worried. I was actually worrying a lot because I thought that it's, uh, the Leviathan base was way more exposed than this. But no, it's really not. Managed to get like decent, um, you know, their, before the engagement, their their lanes were properly pushed, and and they're know, still uh, ahead in terms of towers when you consider that there is a tier three gone bot and a range barracks at half health. They're they're actually ahead in terms of push, shockingly. But e hug are now in a slight gold lead, a slight XP lead, but only by about a thousand each. Yeah, they're, now that it, they're cutting it close, there is no way that Leviathan can afford another another team fight like yeah. that. There is not a... Okay, fight. there is 6200 on Shibby. And I think he's going for it. He's walking straight for the secret shop. Oh, God. Leviathan gonna go out with a bang one way or another, boys. Smoke coming out, the Insta Rapier pickup, 53 minutes in. You Judas Priest, one shot of glory, man. That's all that they have. Well, most likely. At Does, least. Wait, Shredder? Shredder does have an empty item slot, just in case. That's good thinking. This That's is the Rapier pass off play. The only problem is. Here's the problem if, if Shibby or Shredder actually picks it up, it's muted to him. If no one on the enemy team has picked it up yet. If I'm not mistaken about the way Divine Rapier works. <laughs> as soon as enemy picks it up... Yeah, Divine Rapier is muted to anyone in the owner. As soon as enemy picks it up, it's unmuted but cannot be dropped. Huh. So they actually... To get it in Shredder's hands, this specific Rapier, they would have to lose the Rapier, get it back, and have Shredder instantly pick it up pretty much. So what happens if E-Hug doesn't pick it up? If E-Hug doesn't pick it up, Shredder can't pick it up. Or he can pick it up, but he can't use it. And there's a Chrono in on Nushim, of all people. A hook faked from Pudge, but he doesn't really have a reason to do so. He yules up the puck. He's caught in a coil. He'll actually break it, though. And MJW, he doesn't have an axe, but Jenkins has 2,700 gold. He will have buyback here, at least. But that's Onage going the way of E-Hug now, as they are making a comeback. Here's when you feel that little shiver down your spine, and you're like, oh god, what happened? He's we done? also the only one with buyback. Yeah, that's really. The oh, wait. Oh. The only one on the dire team, of course. MJW and SN7 do, of course, but. <sighs> Let's see if this actually becomes like an LGD rapier or a demon rapier. That's basically the choice at this point. But look oh at the damage God. that came out on Infinity, like... One cleave and there goes half of your hit points, son. Oh, gee, Oh, so close! Ooh. Still a push goes on, though. Wait, he, he just... He BOT'd into... Uh-oh. Shit. Oh, he got out! Wow. You crazy SOB, man. <gasps> you crazy son of a bitch. What the hell are you doing? You're carrying a rapier for crying out loud. What is wrong with you? Desperate Jeez. times, desperate measures, I guess. Yeah, I know, but it's... Dear God. Well, on, on the other hand, this is a really smart thing to do. But God, he cut it close. It's, it's a smart thing to do, but it's also a really stupid thing to do. But the problem is the chrono. Like, <laughs> he's basically trying to do the tinker thing. You remember, um, who was it? Yeah, I remember, I remember. Uh, That's gosh. C and B. Now. They, they were pew pew then. But they, they did the Tinker Konka play, and it was pretty insane. Where is he now? I, I, I seriously lost him. It was bot lane, okay. Yeah. He was trying to get the puck by any chance, uh, get cleaved on, and just pretty much one shot him. But, I mean, the puck was, like, really careful about it. There's a butterfly on void. Pushed so well. Yeah. 
The thing is, his limitation is that for the... he only has uh, uh, a 60 second cooldown to pull this off, so he needs to be really careful where he yeah. pulls it. It's not the Tinker, it's... He, he needs to get lucky with a crit on, like, their entire team. This is RNG Dota at its finest, lady and ladies and gentlemen. I'm surprised we don't have Ogre Magi here, like, just popping up out of nowhere because of all the, all the RNG Leviathan's relying on. Can it work? Perhaps. It can work. Will it work? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> Those, uh, creep wave, boom. Done. Going back. But yeah, I mean, if Ehog managed to get a hold of what he's doing... Oh no! There's a Hex! It's out on Sunken! So it is just a support, for now. It has a Mech ghost comes out as well. Point. And the Ghost Scepter, yeah. Ehog are 5 manning though. They know they have to go all in the same way. And there'll be a defense here for Nessun 7. They know they have to defend though. That's the big thing. Um... They've learned their lesson with that first Conquer TPN. And I dare say, I'm if SN7 didn't have this, uh, Ags, they'd be in big trouble right now. I'm actually kind of surprised of why aren't they pushing top lane of all lanes? You know, why middle? Why don't you go top? They still get gold from it. That's yeah, why. Yeah, I mean, still, you, you could stop the bleeding if you're able to, like, push really hard on top lane and just try to contest the team it's, fight there. It's gonna take them so long to push top lane that they they can't at the moment. They need to get to Arax and get there quickly so that Razor can go at ult it, pretty much, and win the game. Well, you do have a phases way with a butterfly. I don't know if that's so difficult to push, actually. He doesn't have a Maelstrom. He, he doesn't have Maelstrom, and he doesn't have Battle Fury. He has no real push potential. It's all single target from this Void, and this is one thing I actually don't care for, for SN7 at the moment, but... It's actually being a hindrance right now. Yeah, I just... A small one, though, but it's a hindrance. I feel like that you should really let go of that Mask of Madness, to be honest, man. I was like, uh... For, like, a Satanic, if you can? Or something. Just save for buyback? Know. I mean, outside of buyback, of course, but, uh... Maybe Satanic, maybe... Uh... Maybe a, me a full meal or not, even, even if it sounds weird, or... Something, you know... Some orb effect late game item that I haven't thought about. Do they have an AC? Yes, they do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Razor has so, one. I mean, you have a butterfly for crying out loud. How much attack speed do you really want? Well, Especially Vinch if has, yeah. that attack speed is worth 30% extra damage to your face. Vinge actually has face, a scepter, treads, and a bracer. So, not too bad for Nushim. He's actually relatively tanky, but... At this point, I mean, who isn't really relatively tanky when you're level 19? Oh, Sunken. That's who. They know about Roche. The Radiant team knows something's up. They see him place the ward. MJW is going to scout it out. And he's gonna get scattered himself. They know he's here. Hey, Ice Blast to come out. It's just on Jenkins at the moment. Who do you give this rapier to? Or the Aegis to? Konka? Or, I mean, you give yes. it to PA? Yes, I would go with Konka, actually. What does he drop? The Blink? The Blink is why it's working, okay? Uh. The second Battle Fury, maybe, but you... No, no, it, oh God, that's a really tough choice, man. I know, right? You give oh, it a PA, I mean, she can drop her Mythal Hammer, the, yeah. You can give the Aegis to the Phantom Assassin, I guess, and if Konka has buyback and he drops the Rapier, well, it's simply like, okay, just give the cheese to Konka and try to recover it, I guess. If he Why drops the Rapier, I'm going to go ahead and say it. This game is probably over if he drops the Rapier. Do you really want to play against a Void with a Rapier? Well, In any situation- Okay! Oh my God, okay! Bro. Holy shit, man. This is- we're, we're entering the holy shit tor uh, territory here. And actually, New is gonna get- oh, He gets hooked! Hey. He's gonna get shredded! The godlike streak is down! The boat's coming in! 
and Sna, he blinks it, but he's already stunned up. The black hole goes out, but it's not enough. There's a buyback out from the void. He's gonna try to get back in here, but Infinity, he's already on the run from the fat man. The hook does miss, but Infinity already slowed down. PA slowed as well because she can't actually blink right onto him. She'll get slowed if she does. She's gonna get jumped on right now. In the meantime, oh. though, Kunkka's still up with his double rapier goodness. Oh, goodness. I thought for a second he died there. I, I wasn't sure either, to be honest. <laughs> I saw someone dropping really low and then just... Who was that? Oh, was the phase... No, wait, no. No, never mind. My mind, my mind, man. My mind's totally screwed up, man. They're they're yeah, putting all their cargo on one boat at this point, Rapture. Trip, yo. Oh, double damage on my face as well. Uh, better than him than the, the Kunkka, I'll tell you uh, that Definitely. Much. He's hitting for... Oh, see. he's gonna do it. He's gonna try it again. Go Scepter from Lust! Oh my god. Go Scepter best item confirmed. Crazy. This game is ridiculous, but the mid tower goes down to creeps. I mean... What is this game, Rupture? Oh, they're gonna jump on Shredder. He's a piggy. He's now bacon. Like, really, really toasty with a good-ass bacon. But bacon, nevertheless, and that's almost two minutes on the on the bleachers. Yeah. Oh no! But they're gonna go after the Roche. The boat will come in. Void is not in the pit. Vinge grabs the Aegis because she just had to. Well, better her than Void. Well. A hex yeah. comes out on Anushin, but you mind, he has an Aegis. He's got a cheese. I mean, it's more that they just deny the Aegis from them. But PA is down. Same with Skywrath. Oh, but in, back in the base, Shibby. He's found his way in. He's doing the Shibby. He's doing the Shibby. And he's gonna get back home. That tower took so much damage, though. There's Mega Creeps in the base. Nusham goes down yet again. But, I mean, space created. Jenkins is in the base counter pushing. Leviathan might pull it out. The creeps are in the base, they're doing a lot here. Oh my goodness. The ancient is under attack. Leviathan might just pull it out, but it's the counter rapier. And Shibby is under siege. There's the hook! Pudge saved him right there. There's a hex, but Pudge says, Don't touch me. There's a ulti coming out. He's got the buyback. There's two rapiers on deck. Who gets it? Who picks it up? Nobody's touching him yet. Shibby, he grabs one. Where's the other? The Master Madness is at down. Void grab the other. Shibi's gonna go down right now. No buyback from Leviathan, and they will be out. Your rares are not safe. My rares are not safe. GG comes out, but what a good one it was, indeed. For Ehug versus Leviathan here. Ehug take the series 2-0. And oh my god. Just man, that was amazing. They just went all full, they, they went all in Vegas style, man. No holds barred, and Jesus Christ, by God. By God, was that amazing. Aren't you serious? What a game. That's all I can say. Yep. Alright, I need a smoke. Alright, I need a smoke. I need a smoke and a cheap whore. Alright, well... I'm SP Revolution 5, about to lose my voice here. Uh, just another word, since people are complaining about the camera. I've been casting for six hours now. It's honestly my weakest thing. I'm working on it as hard as I can. I'm, I honestly don't have the stamina to go on for six straight hours. So, I'm sorry about that. I am doing the best I could. Thank you for those of you who are giving constructive criticism and not just whatever... But hey, Leviathan vs. Ehug, what a game in the end. And uh, you can find myself, if you'd like to say something to me, um, constructive or otherwise, you can tweet at me at SBRevolution5. would appreciate any tweets, any follows. But um, in the end, uh, hey, it is what it is. And got to get better one way or another. Anyways, Rupture, you can find at Rupture on Twitter with a 3 instead of an E at the end. And what a good game. You were I, losing your voice, I'm losing my mind here. Yeah. I, I, I'm i gonna start questioning everything, man. This, 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 this is in Dota. This, this is Dota, but dear God, people. I'm glad that I didn't bet rares on this 
this game because if I was, I would be just having a heart attack all to hell and back. Gee. Honestly, though, I think the rares were worth it. Even if I lost them, I'm e hugs fans deserved them in the end. And hey, thanks to our 6K viewers that were on the channel. Big shout out to you guys. Yeah, we'll see we you guys you later. Guys. Um, yeah. Go homo, but we love you. <laughs> and uh, just step on by, and of course, if you if you want to support us because we're not getting paid for this, donate bottom below. Just saying, yep. man. Well, it would be really appreciated, man. At least I wouldn't sound like a freaking gyrocopter every time I cast. Yeah. And I wouldn't be coughing, you know, like 90% of my cast, by the way. So, you know, everything is appreciated, sounds. Uh, we'll see you. Let's see. What's up? What Should be tomorrow at 8, I think. Um, They had to reset the time. E-Hug and Leviathan can't play at 8. Or E-Hug and Void can't play at 8. Anyways... E-Hug takes the series 2-0. You can find VODs on SP Revolution 5 on YouTube. See you guys later. Have a great night. Peace.